on to the main event, um, a few words about Lance Johnson. He's a master composter. He has a wonderful hat. Uh, he has spent 14 years as director of training for Benny Keith Beverages. So he is a true professional. I think that we're going to have um, a lot of great information today. Um, as he mentioned, he attended the master composter class in the spring of 2019, um, which is supported by the city of Fort Worth. Um, and he's presented several live classes and volunteered on numerous botanical garden activities. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. Thank you, Erin. Hey, I'll tell you, I'm doing this uh, remotely is kind of odd, but I, I wanted to get into the spirit. I wanted to get my hat. I wanted to put on a little sunscreen this morning because I want everybody to feel like getting outside when this thing's over with. Um, it's a beautiful day out there. Did uh, the, uh, Chi Chi, I got my five mile run in this morning, so I'm feeling good about it. I see my neighbor staring me down. He's in here as well. So uh, this is, this is going to be quite the fun class today. I really appreciate everybody's interest. And the, the one thing I, I wanted to I, I'm, a, I'm a beer man by trade. I, uh, I've been with Benny Keith Company for 42 years, uh, and I got interested in this and uh, um, g gave Britt a call and uh, attended the Master Composter class. I really enjoyed it, and I spend my time volunteering over there on Fridays. Anybody's welcome to come on over to the uh, Compost Outpost. Once we get uh, done with this quarantine situation, I'm sure we'll be back over there work in the compost piles on Friday again. It's a lot of fun. Um, and I, I wanted to kind of kind of start this out a little bit. Let me let me get to a, to the presentation right quick. And can everybody see my screen? Aaron, can you see the screen? Yes. Okay. Well, that's my backyard. Um, my neighbor and I work real hard in my backyard. Uh, we like to, uh, to, to plant succulents. Um, and uh, it's, 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 it's been very gratifying to create some of this uh, dirt and, uh, and, uh, and, and see what we end up with. And my neighbor uh, actually got me into composting. Um, he's been doing this for a while and uh, I've been uh, I've been learning uh, by watching him one of the things um, that uh, that I wanted to kind of open this up you've got your microphone on the lower left hand side I wanted to find out ask some questions right quick is anybody currently composting and um, are you are you having success at it are you are you composting and what's going on now I'll give I'll give you a chance to speak right quick anybody I have a, a rolling bin composter that I got from Costco, and I've been real good at filling it up, but I haven't figured out when it's time to empty it. Okay. All right. That makes sense. That makes sense. We'll talk about that. We can talk about that. Anybody, anybody else? We just started our composting. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It, it's a great time of year just to start composting because you've got uh, some some dead leaves. You got some leaves you can you can you know scab some from your neighbors. Um, you've got some green grass. Uh, you've got uh, a variety of things. Um, I I kind of get a lot of a whole lot of leaves all winter long, and then I end up with a whole lot of grass all summer long. I don't think God uh, figured out how to do both of them at the same time. Uh, to help your composting, but we're going to talk about that a little bit. Somebody else, anybody else composting? Uh, my parents have done the just like backyard big pile like you've got on the screen there since I was uh -huh. a kid. Uh, uh -huh. We have dogs right now, so they get into it first and kind of get the first pick. Um, <laughs> But when I remember as a kid always digging around in it looking for worms and stuff. Well, I, right now I've got potatoes growing out of mine. Mine on the very back side. Yeah, I guess you can't see them. This picture was taken a few weeks ago, but uh, right now I've got some volunteer potatoes coming out. So I'm I'm looking forward to bringing some potatoes. I, I, I'm lucky they're on the very back side of my of my bin, and um, they've just volunteered. I have I, I guess they're from some potato scraps that I put in there. Anybody else? Yes. Mark. I compost at Midway Hills Christian Church Rain Catchers Garden. Which okay. Is a garden project. You probably have quite a bit of compost. Several bins, yes. 
Right. Okay. Well, that, we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about that. Uh, uh, Bob, this is the thing that you're looking at here. It's called a shepherd's bin. Uh, it's roughly four by four, I guess. Um, it has a little piece that you can put in the middle to, have, I guess, add water um, uh, and air. Um, but bottom line is, uh, I don't use that middle piece. I just kind of, you can kind of see over in the side, I've got a little fork there and I use that to, to turn the shepherd's bin. Um, I water it down when there's, when there's water in the forecast. I don't mess with it. I turn it about once a week, but when I turn it, I take that fork, I just poke it in there and I kind of twist it and I just get some air going in there. Anybody else? Yeah, this is Bo, and uh, I've been composting for a year or so out in the back with a couple of piles. Excellent. You've had good luck? Uh, pretty good. You know, it's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm still curious about a few things, <laughs> what works and what doesn't work. So Yeah, yeah, good, there's, uh, there's no doubt. I've got a, a friend at work that, that I got him into composting about a year ago, and, and he's still struggling with it. His just kind of sits there. Uh, and, and you hear that a lot. Well, why do we want to compost? We, composting keeps recyclable, nutrient-rich materials out of the landfill. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy. to. If you, if you want to look at it a practical way, I think we were told in the composting class that those uh, the landfills are set up for about a 30-year 30, 30 shelf life, but if we can stop sending all of this composted, this compostable material to the landfills, we might get 30, 40, 50, uh, 50, even 60 years, even double the, 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 life, the life of a of a landfill. And if you can do that, that's saving all of us money because obviously that's an expensive process to uh, set up a landfill. You don't just find a chunk of dirt and start throwing trash out there. There's a whole lot to it. They've got to dig it out and put in liners and, and uh, get it ready for, for what they're going to do. So um, it's it, it really does help and saves us a lot of money. Compost loosens the clay soil often found in these areas of Texas. We use it a lot around here um, at, our, at our house, in my neighbor's house. Our compost adds helpful microorganisms to the soil. And I think that's probably one of the, one of the biggest things. And I think somebody was earlier was talking about worms. They, the dogs get in there and they used to dig the worms when they were kids. It saves money. Using compost reduces the need for water or purchasing amendments for your soil. Um, I don't purchase a lot now. I, use, I try to use my, uh, my compost occasionally. Um, I'll get some of those uh, compost, those uh, um, burr, those, uh, I think they're called cotton burr seeds or something like that, hulls. I, I do get those on occasion. But compost gives the soil nutrients and, and it, it's, it's less watering um, it, and uh, it just, it really overall helps your, your landscape. So what's our garbage made of? Well, 27% is, is paper, 15% is food, 13% is plastics, yard trimmings, another 13%, metal, nine, wood, 6%, glass, 5%, and uh, other mixed, a variety of different odds and ends, about 12%. So if you look at it, and I'm not sure if I can, I can even see this, composting, composting, we can take the food and the yard trimmings, and that's about, I don't know, 28% or so. We can do that immediately. Um, we can recycle uh, paper, plastics, metal, and glass, and I think Fort Worth does a great job of that. We've got those big recycle bins. We put some of those things in there. I went out and I, I took a tour, and, and, and anybody uh, in, the, in the group can do this. You can take a tour of that recycling center, and you can see exactly how that process works, and I, I, was, I was absolutely positively amazed at at watching uh, what was going on out there. And then wood and other. I look at the wood and other, and I think about it a minute, Sometimes my compost bin gets a little um, aromatic, shall we say, and I'll use, uh, uh, and that's, that's totally my fault. I, I add too much nitrogen uh, or it gets uh, too much water in there or not enough air. And so I take some, uh, some wood scraps, some wood, uh, wood pulp, some wood um, shavings and different odds ends out of my, out of my shop in my, in my uh, garage and I, add those to it and boy it just knocks it out right away when i was a, a new composter i was i was I, I had that bin that turning bin that she was talking about uh, i was using that and uh, that was getting a little aromatic and so i called uh brit and i asked him what i was doing wrong and they said well do you have any wood shavings around and i said sure so i added about five pounds of sawdust uh into my uh, little compost turning bin and totally stopped everything that was going on. That was way, way too much wood. So we do have to kind of 
think about what we're putting in there. And we're going to talk about that just a little bit. Aaron, is there any questions we need to talk about yet? Yes, sir. So I've written down three as I'm sifting through. These are great questions. Um, two questions have to do with the material that goes in. So one person says, is paper okay for the brown? One person asks if oak leaves are okay. And then the other question is, how do you get rid of ants? Ants. Okay. Ants. Um, one of the ant, ant thing, I, we had ants at, um, at the, at the outpost at the, uh, over there at the Botanic Gardens and, um, they put cinnamon on it. Um, I don't know if, if they, if they don't like cinnamon or if that's an, if that's an old wives tale or I, I'm not sure. Has anybody, has anybody heard of that before from the group? I have, yeah, you cinnamon have? works and I'm using, uh, I don't have a compost bin, but I've got lots of ants and I'm using orange oil and that's working really well for fire okay. ants. Well, yeah, and that, it doesn't kill them, it just runs them off, right? It kills them. Does it yeah. kill them? It, okay. that, it, a lot of things run them off, but orange oil kills orange them. Oil. Um, I'm also mixing it with some um, liquid um, garden grade molasses and that okay. mixture works really well. Okay. I will tell you, Boiling water does not work. It just moves them elsewhere. Okay, okay. From my experience. Okay. Um, um, there's another question. Yeah. Um, and I'm not gonna pop in too much, but since we're talking about questions, someone asked um, if they're using um, their leftover vegetables to make a broth, they can compost those cooked vegetables, correct? Absolutely, you bet, okay. you bet. Yeah. Now, we're gonna talk about that a little bit, about okay. how you'd wanna do that. There's some, there's some things you wanna do and some things you kinda of don't wanna do. Uh, and we're gonna talk about, as a matter of fact, I think we talk about uh, some of the stuff that we're gonna put into our compost bin next. So um, we'll cover that about the oak leaves and different odds and ends here in a minute. Um, you want to, in composting basics, it's pretty simple. You want to have browns, greens, and water, um, and air, and time. You want to have, it takes five things to make composting work. You got to have brown stuff, which is dead leaves, branches, twigs. Um, you know, when I say branches, I'm talking about chopping them up. I'm talking about, you know, broken down. You don't want to throw a branch into your uh, compost bin. It, it's gonna, it's gonna stop everything and you're gonna have to be working around that branch for the next you know, five years. So you don't wanna do that. But if you can chop it up, greens, you want gra grass clippings, uh, ve vegetable waste, we were just talking about, uh, fruit scraps, uh, coffee, um, coffee grounds. Uh, I put coffee grounds in it almost every day. Um, you know, you, uh, manure, which is it's cow manure, you know, is a, is a little different than dog manure. We don't want to use dog manure. We're going to talk about that a little bit. Um, and uh, hair, feathers, all of this is, is pretty good stuff to use. Um, and then water, having the rounded amount of water and greens and brown is important. You want it damp. You want it damp like uh, kind of like a, a damp sponge, not a wet sponge. So uh, it needs a little bit of water. The water feeds those microorganisms. It kind of gets the two things rubbing together, the nitrogen and the carbon. Uh, and uh, kind of gets things uh, working a little bit. And then you got to have air. So that's why we turn it on occasion. You don't have to turn it. You don't ever have to turn it if you don't want to. But the problem is you're going to, you're going to take this time period and make it a time period a whole lot longer. If you'll just turn it on occasion, it'll break down much faster. So a lot of times people have a big pile and they wonder why it didn't break down. Well, they haven't done anything to it. Um, and, and it will naturally shed water a little bit too. So um, I like to turn it just before a nice rain comes and it kind of soaks in, works out, works out pretty well. So you need four things, brown, green, water, air, and time, uh, pretty much to, uh, to make it work. What should I compost? Well, again, fruits and vegetables, great stuff, great stuff to use. You do have to be somewhat careful though. If you're gonna build a compost bin, if you're gonna have one of those, those turning bins, and we're gonna, I'm gonna show you a picture of mine here in a little bit. But if you're gonna have one of those turning bins that seals up, it's not a big deal. You know, animals really can't get in there. Never had a raccoon figure out how to open it up. So that's been, uh, been okay. But if you do put some things in there, sometimes you will attract animals. So you wanna put those a little bit deeper 
down into, in, into your compost bin. Eggshells are great. I break mine up a little bit. I don't put them in a blender. I just take my hand and I crunch them up a little bit and I, I throw them in there. Uh, coffee grounds and filters. You can, you can do the filter if it's a disposable filter. Those paper filters work great. Um, I kind of uh, add and subtract on the filters. Sometimes I just use the coffee. Uh, if I feel like I'm getting way too many filters, the filters do break down, but I add some of those filters every day. So sometimes I have a lot of filters and I kind of, you know, send a couple to the landfill. Um, tea bags are great. Um, nutshells. Nutshells, uh, somebody was talking about, um, I, 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 have, I have a neighbor um, that has a, a tree that has these little nuts. And I noticed when I put them in the bin, in my, in my compost bin, they will break down. But you really can't tell that they're broken down because they still look like they're whole. But if you touch them and crunch them, they just disintegrate. So they do break down, they break down over time. And, uh, and again, I kind of I kind of choose what I'm going to throw in the in my compost bin. I don't just take everything. Shredded newspaper is awesome, works like works great. Cardboard is a little bit controversial. Cardboard works well. Uh, we use it here. Uh, at my house, we use, you know, we, we get a lot of Amazon and I hate sending those Amazon cardboard boxes. So we take those, we're going to, I'm going to show you what I do with those. I know there's a, a little bit of controversy about the uh, ink that they use on the cardboard. But uh, again, I don't know. I, I, I don't, I don't feel like, like uh, I, I use enough to, uh, to, to have a problem with that ink. Um, and I may be wrong. I may be wrong uh, again. Um, paper works great. Shredded paper from work, if you've got that, that works great. Yard trimmings is great. Uh, fireplace, fireplace ashes works well. Fireplace ashes like out of your fireplace, not out of uh, where you are cooking steaks. If you're cooking steaks and you've got the um, uh, and, and, and you've got a bunch of grease in there from uh, it's, it's not a good thing. But fireplace ashes, if you're just burning wood, that's good. You do have to be a little bit careful. Don't add, don't dump all of them in there. You can dump some of them in there because it will tend to change the pH of your soil. And so if you wanna learn more about pH in the soil, that is not in composting 101, that's gonna be in composting um, at the comp master's composting group that they do uh, at the Botanic Garden. So a lot of good information there. Grass clippings are awesome. House plants are great. Hay and straw are great. Uh, leaves. Uh, again, I told you I use sawdust out of my shop, but I use it sparingly because it does take time to break down. Wood chips, um, cotton and wool rags, dryer and vacuum cleaner lint, uh, hair and fur. Um, I, um, I had uh, two daughters in college, so I, I couldn't afford to take my dog to the, uh, to the hairdresser anymore. So I learned to uh, cut my dog's hair and um, yeah, did a pretty good job, did a pretty good job. Uh, but uh, never heard any complaints anyway. And uh, I started uh, composting the hair and it broke down uh, rapidly. Christmas trees, all of that. Um, good, any questions about that? Anybody, uh, Aaron, anybody out there, any questions about more stuff? Yes, so um, we've got questions about, would coffee grounds count as a green or a brown? A little bit of both, but mostly green. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do ashes count as a brown because of the carbon? Yes, uh, yes. And uh, again, just be a little bit careful with this because they will change the, the, P, the pH, but yes, they do. Okay, two more questions. What about uh, Bermuda grass clippings? Bermuda grass clippings. I think that's on the next one. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Bermuda grass. That's the one. Let's see. That's the one that grows on top of the yard, right? But there's Bermuda. And then there's the other. Now, they say don't use the Bermuda. And the reason being is because Bermuda grows on top of the ground. And so they have those long runners. So when you mow and you mulch, um, you know, there's a good chance that your compost bin is not going to get hot enough and you're not going to chop them up enough. Uh, and so what's going to happen is you're going to have all of this great compost at the end and you pull that compost out and you put it in your garden, and now all of a sudden you're growing Bermuda grass. So, because it, again, it grows on the top of the ground. So you do have to be a, a little bit careful with that. Any more? Nope, oh, can't hear you. Nope. Oh. How, you often to, how often should someone turn a four by four foot pile? Um, I'll tell you what, you can, it, it's totally up to you. I would say when you're looking for something to do, 
Uh, sometimes I like to go out and, and just uh, walk around the yard and I'll go out and turn my compost bin. Um, if you could do it every week, that'd be awesome. Um, but, it, uh, and, but let me, let me, let me clarify that a little bit. When we do it at the Botanic Gardens and we've got all these piles out there and we're going to show you a picture of that here in a little bit. We always save some that are empty. So what we do is we'll pull the sides off of the uh, shepherd's bin and then we'll take all of that and we will just dump that entire thing in another shepherd's bin right next to it. That's a lot of work. But you know what? Keeps volunteers really busy. So it's a great plan. If you're doing that at the house, I don't recommend that. What I do is I go out about once a week I poke it with my, my, uh, that shovel that I showed you, and I just kind of turn it, move it around. And again, I always do it before a storm comes in because then the water gets down deep into it. So once a week is, is uh, ideal. Once every couple weeks is great. Um, you know, once a month is going to be a little slower. Your bin's going to kind of stop working. And I'll, I'll, I'll also kind of clarify with this too. At the gardens, when we build them, the, they'll get up to about 160 degrees. They get really hot. So when they get up to 160 degrees, as long as they're above 100 degrees, they don't turn them. But after they start getting down to lower temperatures, they'll start turning them. And as soon as we do, the, the, uh, my, the activity starts again and they just begin to heat up. So it's totally up to you. But once a week is pretty much ideal. Okay, there's a few more questions. Um, one is, do you use a compost thermometer? The other is, Oh, where'd it go? You guys are having great questions. Um, chicken manure. Adding chicken, chicken manure is manure. awesome. Awesome. Okay. They, they showed a, uh, hey, the chicken manure deal is kind of cool. They showed a, um, a, a deal at, uh, in, the, in the, uh, the, the master's class that we attended. A guy built chicken coops, up raised chicken coops, and he built them above his compost bins. So he's got a compost bin, a compost bin, and a compost bin, right, all side by side. And then he's got chicken coops above and the chicken coops just kind of, chickens kind of did their thing right into the compost bin. Worked out great, absolutely. It's one of the, it's one of the top things you can put into your compost bin. That, that's, that's primo stuff. Excellent. Um, I feel like I know the answer to this question, but um, one person is asking about- You don't have the hat, Erin. You don't have the hat. <laughs> I don't have the hat. Um, asking about, you know, tea bags, coffee filters, if there's any form of plastic in them, uh, the dryer lint, if you're ha a lot of clothes are made out of, of synthetic fabrics. I'm thinking it would probably be not a good idea to put those plastics in the bin, but I would, what is I your, would, I would definitely agree with that. Yeah, I wouldn't now, Some of the, you know, some of these, uh, bags, um, that, that they use from the grocery store. Now, if you've ever ever had one in your garage or stored something out there some of them will break down pretty fast but I think you know I, I'm not an engineer I think all it means is it just all your stuff falls out of the bag I think that plastic is still plastic um, I, I don't think it would be a great idea one last question um, someone oh a lot of questions um, where'd it go they want you to show them the shovel again Okay. All right. Um, All right. Well, let's see. Uh, okay. Let, let's keep on going. Okay. We'll keep on going. Maybe I got another picture of it. And if I have another picture of it, otherwise I'll come back. I'm going to make a note. Shovel. Um, really how, this a is shovel. a question. Yeah. This it's really a not question. a shovel. It's one of those forks. It's got the, you know, the little fork yeah. things in it. I poke the forks down in there and I just kind of twist it and turn it and opens the air up. Yeah. Um, I think you're probably going to cover this soon but how do you keep rodents, possums, or squirrels out of your compost bin? Well, um, if you notice my compost bin, right next to my compost bin, there was a have a heart trap. So I do have a have a heart trap and I do trap some possums, but I only worry about the possums if they start tearing up the yard. Um, you know, possums eat ticks. Um, they do a lot of beneficial things for you, believe it or not but they can, sometimes you get one that's, that's mis mischievous um, and, and, and it's just um, kind of more, more of a, a headache. Um, if you will take, there's, there's a couple ways to do it. One, and I think we'll show a picture of the, the top that they have, I think, on uh, some of the compost bins. 
if you have a big problem with those types of animals, you can take and make a, a lid for your shepherd's bin. Again, they don't get into the turning bin, but the shepherd's bin they can get into, they'll climb right up and go right in. But you can make a lid for that and you can make it out of a little frame of wood and then put some tarp on top of that and staple it around on the bottom side. And you can just drop that thing right on top of the shepherd's bin. It does a couple things. One, it helps keep the animals out. And two, uh, it keeps the moisture in. So the moisture won't evaporate out of the, out of the pile so fast and it'll stay in the pile a little bit longer. Um, but I always, I always kind of bury the, bury my food scraps. Um, I never put meat in there. You never want to put any meat. You don't want to put anything that's just, you know, a, a delicacy for, a, for, a, you know, rats or mice or whatever it might be. But we do, we do put the uh, food scraps in there if they're, you know, vegetables and things like that. So I hope that answers your question. Um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not anti-animals, uh, just I'm anti the animals if they start becoming a pest and start tearing up my yard. I, I just, I just don't like that. Um, and then we catch them in a have a heart trap and um, city used to come take them. I think the city used to come and actually let them out in your yard. I'm not sure, but uh, anyway, uh, that's what I do. I put a lid on top and um, set it right down and, and bury the food scraps about, you know, four or five inches under, under the, under the deal. And then they'll, they'll uh, go to the edge of the uh, fence and they, of, of the fencing, but they can't get through that. So works out pretty good. Okay. So what not to compost black walnut tree leaves or twigs. Um, again, you can read it. it. It releases a substance that might be harmful to some of your plants. Coal or charcoal ash. That's the one that I was talking about grilling. Um, you know, it might have some oil and different odds in there and things that might be harmful to your plants. So that's um, coal or charcoal ash. Again, you're building a little fire out there with some wood products. If you build a fire with wood products, that's great, but make sure they're regular, it's regular wood and you don't have a, a big uh, fi a fire of uh, say, um, you know, pressed wood, um, stuff that's really not wood that you've burned. Uh, some of that stuff has some glues and different odds and ends in there that you don't want in your compost bin. Diseased or insect ridden plants, not a good thing to put in there. Uh, fats, grease, lard, things like that. The odor attracts uh, flies, it attracts animals. Uh, meat or, or fish bone scraps, uh, again, it attracts flies and such. You start seeing some of those big flies flying around, you got stuff in there you don't want. Um, pet waste, um, pet waste, uh, a lot of your pets eat meat. Uh, it might contain some parasites or bacteria you don't want. Yard trimmings um, that have been treated with chemical pesticides. Um, again, I kind of I, I kind of use my head on that on that particular one. Aaron, any, any more questions? Okay, so when we talk about what we're going to add to the uh, compost bin, and this is. This is kind of what we did. Um, when I put this thing together, I put this together when I was doing that uh, master's uh, in composting class at uh, Brit. And this is some of the kind of the stuff, if you're really into the numbers, this is a good example. You can see that we've take, we've got a chart on the right hand side. It's the carbon and nitrogen content. Um, and then you can see I'm adding uh, 20 pounds of grass, 50 pounds of leaves and one pound of coffee. So I take the chart on the left-hand side and I can see my carbon on the left. So I took 20 pounds times the 12.5 uh, for the grass. Grass clippings is 10 to 15. I kind of look at it. I went in the middle, 12.5. I take leaves, uh, fallen leaves. You've got 50 pounds of leaves and I used 30 on that one. And I took coffee grounds on the bottom down here and I put in 25. And so I've got a total, uh, after I do the math, uh, 1,775. I take the same items, the grass, the leaves, and coffee, and I take the nitrogen, and I take 20 pounds, 50 pounds, and one pound, and I look at the nitrogen chart, and all of the, um, all of my users are covering my nitrogen chart, but that's uh, one, one, and one, so I do the math, and I end up with 71. Well, when I take 17, 75, divided by 71, I end up with 25, so that's an ideal mixture right there, 25 to 35 to one, carbon to nitrogen ratio, that's ideal. When you put something like that together and you add a little bit of water, give it a little bit of time, you're gonna heat that thing up nicely. Uh, if you've ever been in the garage and you, maybe you've captured some, uh, you've, you've, you've uh, got those uh, leaf bags and you mow your yard and you take the yard clippings and you put it in that leaf bag and you let it sit in there a few days and then, hey, it's, uh, 
it's uh, it's trash day. So you go back there and you pull that out. You'll feel that bag just heating up, and you've got a lot of nitrogen in there, and that that stuff is heating up uh, big time. So 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 be careful with that. Uh, Aaron, any questions on this page? Be careful on the questions. Now. Um, let's this see. I'm looking at the questions. Um, everyone, don't worry about missing anything because this whole presentation will be posted on Britt's website and I will put the link, but it's under the online resources. So don't worry about that. Um, everybody has kind of answered each other's questions, which is great. I think we're good, good to move forward. Okay, awesome. Okay, so some of the backyard composting, the one that the lady was talking about earlier, I can't remember her name, but she was talking about a tumbling composter. I found the, that picture and that one on uh, Amazon and it was for $77 and I have one exactly like that in my backyard. And it was uh, given to me by a, another gentleman who had a master's, his master's in composting as well. And he used to bring, um, he used to bring um, uh, manure uh, in a five gallon bucket in his um, extremely expensive car. He was very uh, dedicated to it. You wanna select a dry shady spot near a water source for your compost pile or bin. And I'll show you my picture here in a little bit, but mine is right next to a, uh, I took one of those uh, uh, water saving courses uh, for that the city did, and they gave me a 55 gallon barrel. You'll see that I capture rainwater and I use some of that in my compost bin. Um, you don't need to, hose water is good, but the, what we use out at the uh, Botanic Gardens is um, actually Trinity River water. So. You want to add brown and green materials as they are collected, and you want to chop and shred it if needed. I've heard people pick up, uh, they, may, they may take all of this and bring it all in the bags and then drop the bags on their, in their driveway and just mow it with their mulching mower, and then they just throw it back into their compost bin. Um, you can see the shepherd's bin there on the, on the right. Um, that one is uh, typical. That's what mine looks like, and they're about $50. And the picture on the right, um, and it might be under some of y'all's, um, some of the videos on the, on the right hand side of your screen. It looks like kind of like lasagna and you can see, you can see brown and you can see green and you can see brown and green. Ideally, if you had all the green and you had all the brown, then you would kind of layer it in, sandwich it in there, like you're making lasagna, and you'd add a little water in each one of the brown, each as the brown gets in there, you'd add some water in there, soak that down real good, and you'd make this giant lasagna looking green and brown pile. And you can also see that some of the food scraps are a few inches under the brown there. Food scraps are lower down in the pile to keep them away from the animals. And you want to moisten the dry materials as they're added. You want to mix the grass clippings and green waste into the pile and bury fruit and vegetables several inches under the compost. And remember, 25 to 1. Now, again, I use kind of a swag method. I just guess at it. I look at it and I think, well, I'm going to add a whole bunch of these brown and I'm going to add a little bit of the green. Sometimes I've got more green than I have brown. And so over the winter months, I'll take the brown and I'll kind of store it on the right hand side of my bin and kind of leave some in there. And then when I get more green, then I mix the two together. I, it's just like, you know, making cake. You, you just kind of, it's kind of a, a there's, it's a, I'd, I'd say it's a scientific method, but it's pretty unscientific, if that makes sense. Any questions about this page here? It looked like there were some questions coming in. There, there are. So okay. um, one person is asking, um, is it okay if it's only partial shade or six to eight hours of sun versus a fully shaded spot? Yes, absolutely. And, and one of the things I, I would say on that is I've got that, my tumbler in the sun and it works a lot faster. Uh, it's black. I think it absorbs the heat uh, and, and it seems to make compost a lot quicker than, uh, than the bin itself. And my bin is in a little more shade. I think, this is just me, this is me being personal. I think it's just a, a whole lot easier to work your compost bin in the shade than it is in the sun. So um, I think that's a, a lot for, uh, for, uh, for, the, for the human aspect of it versus the biological aspect of it. The sun will also tend to dry out your bin quite, quite rapidly. So you want to leave it in there. Yeah, I don't. I think the sun. The biggest problem with the sun is it dries the water moisture out of it pretty fast. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, there's there's a question from Kristen, and Kristen, if you 
I'm not understanding your question. It says, can I add excess coastal to my compost left over from round bales my animals have mulched down to nothing? Does that make sense to you? Uh, you know, Lance? yeah, it, 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 coastal hay, he's got some, yeah, oh. I, I would say so, absolutely, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, as long as you're not, you know, it's not, not like uh, when your animals are consuming, as long as they're not like dogs because of the dog poop, right? It's a little bit different poop. So I think that'd probably be good for it. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay, that's it for now. Okay. And so this is this is kind of my setup. This is the at the Johnson house. Um, you can see, matter of fact, there's one of my little. Uh, you can in that picture, you can kind of see that that uh, that potato, that volunteer potato coming up there. Um, that's my. There's my little have a heart trap on the side over there. You can see the shovel, but the shovel's not a not a good. Oops, hold on a second. Not a good picture. That's my golfing buddy wanting to know why I'm not on the golf course today. Okay, so the uh, you can see the uh, volunteers in there. You can see my little have a heart trap on the left hand side. It's not open. It's not being used. But um, that's my bin, and I've filled that bin up probably five times, um, and it just keeps consolidating down. The bottom of it's turning into some pretty good dirt, but we've already pulled a lot of the dirt out of it. Uh, we've already used that in the yard. That was a yard project this year, trying to get my yard to level out. Uh, you can see my uh, my rain capture bin there. Uh, did took one of the courses um, for for the rainwater, and they gave us the bin. We 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 created those. Um, on the very bottom, you can see um, my tumbler, uh, and I kind of exaggerated the plus and the and the zero in there. The idea is that thing just slides off, and if it's on the plus side, that's where you're adding. And if it's on the other side, that's where you're taking away. That's where you're taking out. So one of the questions earlier was, how do you know when it's ready? Well, you kind of know when it's ready. I take a shovel, I, I turn it, I turn that thing about um, once a week, uh, and I kind of turn it several times, and I make sure that it's moist. Sometimes I get it too moist. If I get it too moist, I'll add a little bit of uh, sawdust or something from my shop. Um, and um, right now you'll notice, well, you, you can probably see both sides are about the same. I'm kind of starting over because I've just taken everything out of that thing and I spread it all throughout my yard. My goal is to have that bin as much as I can next, next, um, and I guess next spring, as much as I can in there. And then I'm going to add all of that to a garden area and add uh, some of that to my, to my yard again on kind of a top dressing on my yard. Uh, does a great job got a couple examples of what's going on there but uh, i just turn these things um works like a champ um any i don't know if there's any questions about any of that there's one question it says what is the easiest way to get the final product out of the bin if using a shepherd's bin and then another question how long does it a general rule of thumb take for decomposition to happen okay it, it, it's it's totally up to you but i would say it when i fill that bin up it it decomposes pretty rapidly to what you're seeing but but what you're seeing is not ready to use as compost it's got to sit longer to where it turns into a dirt looking substance and i think i have a picture of that here in a little bit um it will take and the easiest easiest way to get it out is to if it's in a shepherd's bin just lift the lift the sides up it's very lightweight you just just have a somebody on the other one side and the other side just lift it up and you can just use it like that use it right away so you just use it with a shovel um, if you don't want to do it that way then I guess kind of shoveling into a five gallon bucket maybe uh, in, in if you wanted to leave the sides where they are um, but what I do is I just I just lift the whole thing up shovel everything out of it and move it on the bottom it's it's really kind of turning into dirt but on the top, you'll see uh, it's there's more a whole lot more leaves and such. So um, it, sometimes you've got to dig through the top to get to some of the in the bottom. Just depends upon. I, I like to use the whole thing. I, I I get the whole thing once I get to a certain point. Then I will take the thing and I'll I'll sift it through kind of a wire mesh, and we'll show you that wire mesh here in a second. Now with the tumbler what I do, the easiest way to get it out, and this is, I, I kind of, there's, there's legs on the side of it. Let's see, there's legs on the side of it. And so when you, if you open it up and then try to dump it out, it hits the legs um, because I put a, a bin underneath it and I capture it. 
So what I do is I turn the whole thing upside down to where I have the lid on the bottom and it's still on there. I put my capture container underneath it and I slide that lid off. You can see how it, the lid slides. I slide that lid off halfway through and it all just dumps right into the uh, container. So uh, pretty simple, but it took me a while to figure that out that I couldn't do it halfway open and then turn it because the legs, I'd hit the legs every time. It, Seemed pretty simple to a beer man, but uh, it wasn't. Anything else? I feel like you might have already answered this, but just in case um, someone asks, how often do you turn the tumbler composter? I, I do it w once a week. I do it once a week or when I remember. Um, sometimes I forget. Um, I have taken I have taken my, uh, I've got a thermometer. Somebody was talking about a thermometer. We, I do have a, when you go to the master's uh, class, uh, you graduate and they give you a thermometer that's about two feet long, three feet long, something like that. And you can jam that down into there. I have uh, hit the 160 degrees in my little, my tumbler before without a problem. The hottest I've ever gotten it is about a, about 120, 130 in the, in the shepherd's bin. But um, yeah, I, I turn it about once a week. I turned about once a week. Again, I you add the water to it one time, and the water seems to stay good. I, I don't really add much water to it. I think it gets enough from the scraps and vegetables and different odds and ends that I throw in there. I try to put most of my food scraps inside the tumbler because, uh, one, they break down a little faster, and two, the animals can't get in there. Okay, so um, this, is, uh, this is some practical stuff, okay? Um, on the left hand side in the top top left you can see this is my neighbor's uh, set up there i call it roadside gold he was uh, i think they were getting rid of some parts uh some bin bins that held parts or something like that at, at his work and so he uh he 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 they were they threw them away so he went ahead and got them and brought them over here and they're quite large they're about four by four uh and he kind of uses one uh for the compost and then he starts filling the other one uh, time again will take anywhere from you know three months to three years I guess depending upon uh, the maintenance um, I don't think he, he he turns it very much so his is probably an ongoing year-long um, decomposition but uh, once he gets that one on get, gets one going he's got plenty of uh, compost uh, and we both we both share out of that he lets me borrow some on, on occasion uh, so it can take anywhere from six months to a year um, on that um, on the right hand side, you can see I, roadside gold. I found that that um, compost bin uh, at um, on on Amazon for about eighty dollars. Uh, I think he found this one as well, um, sitting out in front of somebody's house, uh, and uh, it was they were throwing getting rid of it. They weren't um, they didn't steal it, um, but uh, uh, and what what you do is you just keep putting compost. You put composting materials through the top. Uh, you can add a little water through the top. You can see it's got some air holes on the back and air holes on the side. And then uh, dirt comes out the bottom. Uh, and so dirt currently not being used, but it's kind of a neat, I, unique idea. Uh, I've not ever used one. So if anybody's using one of those, let us know um, how well it works. And then I drove up to the uh, University of North Texas Health Science Center. And they've got, um, you can see four compost bins there. Um, and, and those are different stages of decomposition. So they put the fresh leaves in the, in the one on the right and, they'll, and then they'll open those other gates up and they just kind of let things uh, decompose and, um, and um, you know, over time. So they've always kind of got one that's, they're using some, some compost. Um, the city has actually got some good compost at different locations now. You can look that up on the website. Uh, and they've, uh, if you show them, I think you have to show them your water bill now or something like that. But um, there's now compost, uh, good stuff available. All of these people, they're trimming trees and they create all of the bark mulch and such. They're uh, dumping in these areas and um, they're, that's breaking down and they're using that. And they're giving that away free to the city citizens of Fort Worth. Um, this is um, at the uh, compost uh, outpost over there. Uh, my a, a good friend of mine that I run with, that's his little screen on the right hand side on top of his wheelbarrow. 
Uh, and so he creates his compost and then he dumps it into that screen, screens it through, comes out the bottom. That's where I learned about those nuts. When you do those nuts, they're, they, they look like they're still a nut, but they're not. They're, they're just, uh, the inside's gone. So you can just crush those right through that and you have a nice compost there. Um, you can see how they're layering. Uh, they're starting to layer that, um, uh, that compost there in the shepherd's bin in the middle. That's at the compost outpost. <clears throat> you can see the wheelbarrow right next to it. They put the brown stuff in the wheelbarrow first and then they, because uh, the wheelbarrow is full of water, they take that uh, and then put that back into the uh, shepherd's bin. And then on the left hand side is what we get out of those bins. Uh, and they keep about, I don't know, probably, I'm guessing 40 of those bins going at any one time out there. Uh, and then they have a screen just like that, and they'll put some volunteers, and we'll start uh, taking that, we'll take the sides of that shepherd's bin off, shovel all of that stuff into the screen, and we'll fill that wheelbarrow up with, uh, with great compost. And uh, um, there's uh, uh, the, a kind of a garden area with a lot of trees and such right next to there, and where they take that stuff and put it around the trees and water it in, and it's great. They get some great, um, some great fruit out there. Questions? So Lance, um, several questions. One is how fine is that screen? Can you say? Uh, I, I'm, I don't know. I, I, I wish I could, I wish I don't know. Um, okay. It's not, it's not, it's not real fine. Um, yeah. I would, yeah, I would say it's probably similar to, uh, what would that be? A rabbit, rabbit, you know, a rabbit cage type mm -hmm, cage. Mm -hmm. It would, it's not that same material. Cause I think that would be a little hard to work with. Cause sometimes this stuff, we just push it through, um, you know, cause it's, it's kind of in its, its last, it's still a nut, like I was telling you earlier, and you just kind of mm -hmm. shove it through it and it just kind of breaks it up. So, um, okay. I don't know how fine that is, but I, I think the picture you might be able to see. Maybe, yeah. maybe a uh, half inch. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Someone has, um, Beverly Gordon is, says, I, says, I use a half inch screen. Yeah. Um, another woman, Kathy Cox says, I found out that my wired garden cart works great as a screen and it has wheels, which uh -huh. is great. A um, few more questions. One is, have you considered using a drill with an auger to turn compost? Um, I'm not that technical, but I think, uh, I think that'd be a great idea. Uh, I, I don't, I mean, I, if, as long as you're getting some air down into it, I find that, 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 that little shovel that they've got here on the left-hand side on top of that wheelbarrow, that little rake looking thing, um, that's not exactly what I use. I use something similar to that. Mine's got, the prongs on mine are, are thicker. And I just take that and I just jam it in there and I just turn it. I just kind of turn mm -hmm. it and pull up on it and it opens it up pretty well. And I think mm -hmm. that seems to work. Uh, I think we can, we can overwork this. Um, as, mm -hmm. as you, you can make composting as difficult or as easy as you want, really. There you go. Yeah, it sounds like you're maybe using more of a pitchfork type a pitchfork. implement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, that, so that leads into this question, which um, is probably different for everyone. How much time do you spend on composting per week? Um, if I'm not volunteering out at, out at the Botanic Gardens, which it's usually a couple hours on Friday, um, two to three hours on Friday when I do that. If I'm not volunteering out there and I'm doing it at my own house, maybe 10 minutes, seven minutes, not, not very long. It's, it's long enough to take, mow the yard, um, pour, the, pour the grass in, uh, kind of mix it in. Maybe it you know, takes three or four minutes um, I kind of walk away from it at that point. Usually sometimes I add water to it. If, uh, if it's just grass, I don't really add a lot of water, but if it's, if it's brown stuff, I add, add water. And sometimes it'll take me a while to add water and get that going. That could take 10 minutes. Okay. Um, a quick, kind of a quick check. Someone's asking, so the ratio of brown to green should be 25 to one. Is that 25, correct? Okay. 25 to one, but that's 25 to one carbon to to nitrogen, nitrogen. right? Yeah, ratio. Right. So, okay. because each item has a different carbon amount and different nitrogen amount, if you put, uh, I, I'll just use some examples. I would, in that example we did earlier, we had, I think, 30 pounds of leaves. 30 pounds of leaves, I think it was. That's a lot of leaves. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, brown leaves, that 
is a lot of leaves. 20 pounds of grass, not that much because it's much more compact and much more dense, right? So it's a whole lot of leaves and less green stuff. And if you have something that's really hard like sawdust, sawdust is really hard because it's little pieces of wood, right? Hardwood. So sawdust, you might want to only use a half a pound or a pound of that because that's going to be really high in carbon, but almost, almost have no nitrogen to it. Mm -hmm. So um, that's one of the things I use to add when I start getting a little stinky problem. You know, I can put a little sawdust in there. Um, okay. So yeah, you use a whole lot of green stuff. I mean, a whole, whole lot of brown stuff and less green stuff. And so like, you know, 30 pounds of leaves, but that's a whole lot of leaves because the leaves are dead and they don't weigh anything. 20 pounds of grass is, you know, maybe one or two bags in your lawnmower and you're done with that. You've got 20 pounds easy. Mm -hmm. And then I just keep throwing food scraps in there, different, you know, the, you know, and I say food scraps. I, I'm not, I'm not scraping plates with meat on it, throwing it out there. That's a whole different deal. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. Okay, um, I'm cognizant of our time together. We have about seven or eight minutes left. Okay. Um, there, there's, of course, more questions. We're not going to be able to get to all the questions, um, but I'm, I'm hopeful that as you continue, that the questions will be answered. Okay, and you're hoping I'll go faster. I got it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So. That was a tactful way of saying. <laughs> I'm looking at the clock. So how do I speed if, up my composting? If That's we go. If we go over, I think that's okay a little bit, but um, okay. yeah. All right. Well, how do I speed up my composting? One of the things it's it, bigger, the better to a point. If you have a three or four foot compost uh, pile, it, the quicker it's going to heat up and the more microbial action you're going to get. So to a point, bigger is better. Microbes need oxygen to do their work. Turn the pile once per week. If you don't want to turn it, poke it. Poke it, move it around. Keep your mix about 25 to 1. Keep your compost pile moist like a damp sponge, not soggy, not waterlogged. Um, you want smaller pieces break down faster. So you can shred your leaves. You can chop them up. You can chop up some of the stuff that you bring out of your kitchen. If you throw a whole piece of celery in there, it's going to take longer for that whole piece of celery to degrade uh, than it would if you chopped that celery up. So uh, it just gives more, more workspace for those little microbes to consume. Uh, if it stops, if you can't, if you are getting zero heat, zero anything, you've stirred it, you've watered it, you've done everything to it, alfalfa meal and soybean meal are high in nitrogen. And if you don't have, sometimes in the year, you don't have enough green stuff. So I use alfalfa meal or soybean meal, and it doesn't take a whole lot. I just sprinkle all some in on the top, and then I water it in um to uh, to try to to try to get it going again um how do i use my composted material well it's it's pretty it, it, it is very versatile you can add it to the top of the soil before you plant works great as an amendment to your soil um, if you add it to the top of the soil if you put some drip irrigation it'll it'll water the nutrients right into the soil um, and it can be and and um, it can be placed at the base of a, of a fruit trees to encourage root growth. You can move it out a little ways from the, from the, uh, from the tree. And again, the roots will expand, will expand out to it. This is a, a, a couple of examples. And I wanted to show you a couple of things. This is my, my neighbor's yard and part of my yard. Uh, on the right-hand side is uh, kind of a little creek area that we, we built at my, my neighbor's house. And underneath there, I think I have a picture on it is it's you can see it here it's cardboard we took all of that cardboard and used it as a weed block we put all that cardboard in there and then mulch poured mulch on top of that cardboard and created what you see on the lower right hand side the cardboard on the top right side of this picture right there is what i use um, in the summer i'll take um, those amazon boxes and i kind of shred them up into you know two inch pieces or so again um, I only do it for my, for my own, uh, I guess I'm bored a little bit in the garage, but I chop them up a little bit and I'll add those to the compost bin when in the summer when I don't have enough brown stuff. So I'll add um, some of the cardboard in there. Um, you can see 
uh, the potatoes. Uh, we, we added some of that um, to our potato bins there and we're growing potatoes in there. The little picture on the lower right hand, on the lower left hand side is the edge of my house. And, I, and I, I'm kind of proud of this picture. It's kind of, maybe it seems a little stupid, but um, I couldn't grow uh, grass up against my house. Uh, it just wouldn't grow. And I blamed it on the sprinklers. I blamed it on the sunlight. I blamed it on a variety of different odds and ends. Finally, I took some of that compost, um, composted dirt, and I just started spreading it along the side of the house. And now that was actually the first to come back this year. So uh, it's, it's been very successful uh, in areas where I thought it was a water problem or I thought it was a variety of different odds and ends. Turned out that um, by putting the compost in there, it was just like magic. Uh, the, the grass just grew right into it. it. It loved the nutrients and it spread on its own. I didn't have to plant it. It loved it. And that was after a couple of years of struggling. Um, you can see where our cardboard was um, in those other pictures. We've planted some onions in there. Um, and we've also, you know, used a lot of the compost. You can see some of it down there on the, on the, on the bottom of the, of, the, uh, of the picture. We use that um, in there to uh, amend the soil for the, uh, for the onions. Um, we make compost tea every year um, at the Botanic Gardens. Um, it's a comp concentrated compost in liquid form used on soil to give it a boost of nutrients. It, it's safe for the environment, great nutrient enhancement. It improves plant growth, reduces water usage. And basically what we did was we create a big old giant tea bags, big old tea bags of compost. We put those tea bags into, uh, into uh, some, some water. Um, we use the Trinity water out there at the uh, Botanic Gardens, but put it into water and then put some air stones in there and get some, uh, get some air going in there and kind of keep that thing going over a period of time. And you've got some really good compost tea. Uh, you can dilute, dilute it. You can uh, dilute it down and use it on your, on your plants and such. Um, it works, works like a champ. Uh, again, we showed this screen here. Again, I, I like using the cardboard. There's a little bit of, well, some, some people are a little, little, little scary on it, but um, because of the, but you can see there's really no um, ink or anything on the cardboard in that, that particular picture. Um, and, and, and why did I get involved in this? People, people say, you know, um, why'd you do it? Well, my wife and I were in um, the Bahamas and we were at a sandals resort and you go to the sandals resort and every morning we'd go and it was just beautiful. It was beautiful and pristine watching the walking on that beach. And by the end of the day, the picture on the top left is what we saw. And it was all the plastic and different odds and ends coming in from that ocean. Now I realize that plastic is not going to, going to, going to decompose and I'm not going to put that in my compost bin, but I was out there and I'm seeing this thing and I'm thinking, you know, we've got to do something about it. I came back here and uh, uh, called Botanic Gardens and called Brit and um, started looking at these classes and that's how I got involved with the composting. Uh, it just seems like it's not brain surgery. Uh, it seemed like the logical thing to do and, and, and that's, that's how, how, how we got involved with it. This, uh, you've probably seen some of these signs and I think um, Aaron was talking about this earlier. Um, this is the food waste program. You can go to the website um, Fort Worth does a great job of this, uh, reducing waste, reusing items, recycling, and composting. Um, there's the residential food scraps. The bucket on the top, top right is what you get for your, your $20 subscription fee. It's a one-time deal. Uh, you get that bucket on the top right and you get the bucket on the bottom. You can put the bucket on the top right on your counter and you can add all sorts of food scraps, different odds and ends in there. And then you can take that and you dump it into the five gallon bucket that has a, uh, a lid that seals. Uh, and as you seal that lid up, you can, you can take it to these, uh, um, to these recycling centers in the city of Fort Worth. And um, they take it and it's, um, it, it's, a, it's, it's a going thing. And it, it's working, working really well to my, to my knowledge from what I've been told. So uh, Aaron, um, it is 11.01. I tried, it is to, I tried to get through it as quickly as I could. What do we, what do we do from here? Well, um, first I want to thank you for giving us all this great knowledge. This is wonderful. Uh, I feel like we answered 90% of our questions. Uh, there are a few questions that are still out there. Uh, again, a lot of participants have answered each other's questions, which are great. Um, we don't have time to get into any more. 
Um, uh, the, although I will say, <laughs> someone says you need to send the idea to Dallas. That's funny. Um, it says, where did you mention before Fort Worth residents can get mulch and material for free? Where do they go to do that, Lance? Hey, you can go to the website. Go to the Fort Worth, uh, City of Fort Worth website. And you can just Google it. You can Google it and you'll have some locations. Uh, I, it, I think some of these locations that you're looking at are probably some of the locations with mulch. They're all over the city. And the, the reason they're there are because of all of these trucks that are doing all these tree trimming. Um, they trim the trees and they don't want to take those out to the landfill because right. that stuff's going to break down. So they take them, the city has provided locations for them to go and they dump these things in, into the area. Now, what used to happen is the landscapers would then go get all of this stuff and you would go out there. My neighbor and I went out there, you know, several times and there's never anything out there. But mm -hmm. my understanding is they've stopped that now. And I think you have to have your, you know, your, you can only take a certain amount. You can't be a landscaper. Yeah. Yeah. And one of my colleagues is saying that she gets her free mulch from a re the recycling place on the north side. I know there's one down um, south of downtown off of 35. Mm -hmm. So there's just go to the city website and you can easily find where you get that information. Um, and again, just another, um, another friendly pitch. I've given the link. If anyone's interested in um, supporting Brit or the Botanic Garden, um, we are happy to welcome your support. Um, and so that is on there too. And I will just mention again, uh, we have one more free class, free Zoom class uh, this month. It's on the 25th. I'm looking at my calendar. Yep, to make sure. Uh, it's at two o'clock with Steve Huddleston, who is the uh, kind of head horticulturalist at the Fort Worth Botanic Garden. He's going to be talking about residential landscape design. I think a lot of us are busy in our gardens during this time. Uh, it's a great outlet and it's, it's the time to do it. So um, feel free to join us. And then I'll be posting more classes um, on that online resources page on the Brit website. Um, and these will be classes with a nominal fee, um, $10 for members, $15 for non-members. Uh, and so we hope that, that we'll see you at those as well. So thank you so much, Lance. And this is recorded. I'm getting ready to stop the recording and I will post it um, on the online resources area of Brit's website so you can go back and kind of soak it in. Thank I you, really Lance. Appreciate it. Oh, and, and Brooke Best has put the address uh, 2400 Brennan in Fort Worth to go pick up that mulch. So there will be a oh. run on mulch. <laughs> yeah, well, there's, there's several places. So there are. There, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of them. So if, if that one's not near your home, take a look at it and, and you, you can, there's more you can carry, carry away. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we've got a good city thing going on here. So thank you so much, Lance. Thank, and thank you. you everybody for joining. Bye.